Welcome everybody to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. I just was just told that they have a wider frame. They need it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we well, see our different background. We want to welcome those who've joined us, and we have a nice little setup here, and I think it's pretty cool. And so, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this new setup that we have. And today, Pastor, I wanted to ask you uh, about a particular scripture and how that plays within the church, and even maybe into ministry for those who are, are watching that maybe serve in ministry or even just providing for the home. And and uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. The Bible is clear about laziness. And so can there be laziness and doing the work for the Lord? Do those things, is it, does it repel or can that work together? I, I have a real difficulty with the idea of a lazy minister. You know, when the Apostle Paul speaks concerning ministry, he'll use terms or words like work or labor in the ministry. He gives testimony concerning himself, how that he labored night and day, how he did so with tears, that he didn't want to be dependent on on people's support. He wanted God to support him. and. And uh, in various ways, I mean, there's just too many, too many scriptures that relate to ministry as work, and that uh, slothfulness has no, should be uh, no part of any minister's life, John. So, the ministry is labor. You mm. you have long hours. You spend much time in not only uh, giving messages, but you you put a lot of time in into people's lives and. Then there's the, the things like travel and and then the amount of hours that you'll put into uh, staying up late, talking to people. You were with me just the other day and 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 you were part of that. You you saw how long a day really can be in a minister's life, you know. Where I got I got to bed at eleven, I fell asleep at one. Actually the meeting ended at eleven and I <laughs> fell asleep at one. So but that's, that's the normal part of ministry life that many people are not aware of. So anybody who is um, serving God is a full-time servant of the Lord and doesn't have set hours necessarily because there are times that it'll last longer. Sometimes it's, it's less, but behind all of the actions, there's, there's not a slothfulness at all. There's a... There's a uh, a con continual drive that you have. So a man who doesn't uh, doesn't labor, doesn't work. A man who is lazy and and perhaps uh, expects others to to supply his need. And that's improper. During the time of Christ, you had uh, rabbis who very often would have uh, a job as well as uh, on a. a receiving and, um, you know, a support from people. You know, Paul speaks of himself as being a tent maker. Mm -hmm. And he worked with his own hands, he said. So, no, I, I, I don't believe that slothfulness or laziness is really uh, has any part in a minister's life. So then my follow-up question on that would then, can a person who would biblically be considered lazy or those who are exercising slothfulness, can they, that person be anointed? No, I, 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 I say that quickly, but anointed, when you say can somebody be anointed, somebody can very definitely have the anointing of the Lord to, to serve, but uh, is that anointing going to be um, experienced to its depth or its fullness? Uh, I, I would be one who, who would... Uh, think not because to walk in the fullness is to is to be seeking opportunity as well as entering opportunities and being uh, vigilant for those things that God is opening up for you so you know I, we've all met over the years uh, men who claim to be called by God and yet they won't work a job mm -hmm. you know I, 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 I think of some that I know who who think that their job is to be supported by others, and and on occasion, they will um, they will um, maybe walk around and talk to people, but a lot of times they're just sitting around. When I first got saved, a friend of mine named Bill had opened up his apartment to 
to uh, Believers for Fellowship. I'm talking about over 50 years, 52 years, almost 52 years ago now. But that's when I first encountered a lazy quote-unquote evangelist. That's the first time I did. I was at my friend's house. I wasn't even saved at the time. I was at my friend's house and I came and I sat down and I, I looked and, and in the kitchen was somebody that uh, was opening up my friend's refrigerator and was making himself a sandwich, right? And, and I'm looking at that, and he comes walking in, and he's holding the sandwich in his hand. I'll never forget this. And I'm, I'm, I'm there. There's one other guy there, and my friend is there. Those two f other guys, Bill and this other guy, are Christians or claiming to be Christians. I'm the only one in the room who is not a believer, and so this guy in, in between bites from his sandwich says to me, anybody here want to get saved? And he, I, he's talking to me, so I looked at him and I said, not today. And he says, okay, and finishes eating his sandwich. And I walk up to my friend later on and I said to him, listen, I got to ask you a question. Why is he digging through your groceries making himself a sandwich? He says, oh, he's an evangelist and he lives off of... Uh, the offerings that are given to him. So I saw it from the very beginning as a non-believer, the laziness and the reward that sometimes mm -hmm. is given to those people who are lazy. And they're not doing the work of the Lord, they're sponging off of people. You know, you have one or two people coming to a Bible study and before you know it, you're incorporating as a pastor in a church mm -hmm. and you're receiving offerings because uh, you don't want to work, because you don't want to go out and work with your own hands and produce an income. Instead, you want to sponge off of the people that you take advantage of by giving them messages that uh, don't have a life that lines up behind the, the exhortations that you're giving. And so I've seen that. I've seen where the guy's wife works while he sits around at home mm -hmm. and prepares his Bible studies for the three or four people that might show up and expects that that's going to be a church and that he's the pastor. So no. I don't believe that uh, the way I read Scripture and the way I've, I've uh, seen ministry done for all of these years, I just haven't seen on a personal level uh, a man who's, who's lazy, not dedicated to serving the Lord, not open to the long hours and the difficulties. I just haven't seen that quote-unquote ministry uh, blessed by mm -hmm. God. Well, thank you, Pastor. I know... <clears throat> That was something that came up that I was looking at, and uh, scripture is clear about uh, as a as a, a door hinges on its hinges, or so does a lazy man, and so it it talks about a lot about their the ministry that it's work, but not only just that work. There is work to be done for the family. There's work to be done for the church. There's work for to be done for the ministry, and uh, and I was just wondering, you know, can the Lord honor and bless that when there can be slothfulness in in, in that life? By, um, under, under normal conditions, I don't know that that is a life that is in the position to be blessed. You serve the Lord with all that's within you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That which, you know, you, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your, right. all your might. No matter what it is, eat energy, whatever it is that you do, do all as unto the glory of the Lord. Amen. And so a life sold out to Jesus is a life that's busy for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, you guys, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Pastor, you want to share a little bit about what you'll be sharing on Sunday? Uh, I'll be sharing a little bit about, um, out of Mark chapter 14, I'll be sharing about the, um, the anointing that the Lord Jesus Christ receives and uh, the offering that is given to him and the response of... Uh, of uh, Judas and some of the men in relation to that. And I'll be speaking concerning that uh, particular event found in chapter 14 of Mark. It's a, it's a good study. I, it's one of the studies that, that I personally get a lot out of. May I ask a question concerning this? Oh, just that. really quick, Pastor. <laughs> Does that event, is one of the things that Judas was, this, was upset about, to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. As I read scripture, it appears to me that that was the catalyst that caused him to move into the plan he had already formulated uh, to betray the Lord. Uh, Judas was a thief. John makes it clear that, 
that he would take what was placed in the in the bag, in the offering bag that Jesus had, or the the, the bag that was used to supply his needs, and offerings would have been placed in. And, and he got upset because of what he considered to be a waste, because John makes it very clear he wasn't caring about the poor, he was caring more about uh, the amount of money that he lost out on, because he calculated the worth of this was at least three hundred denarii, which was uh, about a year's wages, and because he pilfered, because he would take things, and and all, uh, he was upset uh, about the uh, the loss of personal revenue. Yeah. So he sold Jesus. He was able to get thirty pieces of silver. Um, he didn't get the three hundred denarii he wanted, but he got some silver. The greedy heart will settle for anything. <laughs> yeah, 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 so we'll look at that in some yeah, detail. Looking forward to it. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, looking forward to see you on Sunday. We have services at 8.30 and 10.45. Uh, we have a time of worship and, and getting into God's Word. Come on out and join us. It'll be a great opportunity to be spend time with your church family. And then always keep it in front of you guys. I keep bringing this up but because it's such a significant thing as our Israel trip coming up in March. Uh, Pastor David and Marie would invite you guys to come out. Yes, it's a life changer. So, I, I mean, if you're able to, at least register, uh, come to the information meeting. We'll have one soon. And, uh, and Lord willing, be able to go on this trip. So Amen. look forward to having you. Thank you guys for tuning in and God bless you.